Welcome back to Rose Education. This is Zed. Today I'm going to be talking about PLTR. What I'm going to be doing here today is a little bit of technical analysis to give you an insight to uh, what traders are thinking or doing. Then I'm going to go towards their earnings report that was just released, uh, the presentation, anything I can find, SEC filings, and what makes this company different than others. I'm proud into it. So right now on a one on a two-hour perspective, since we can't do one week, uh, since it's a new IP, it's a new IPO. Uh, what we get to see here is an MACD that's actually curving downwards. That's a little bit negative. EDX that is a little bit sloppy. Uh, it shows you potential off a current negative trend rather than a positive one after it dipped a little. But what we get to see as well uh, is an uptrend here that looks like quite healthy. As we look into here into two hours, we see the downtrend starting today. Unbalanced volume, it's at the lowest it's ever been in terms of, sorry, momentum is over at the lowest it's ever been. And Billion percent R is still not even old with that massive 15 or 13 percent dip. Moving averages here, uh, there's no point of really mentioning it, but 1244 at the top, 1131 in the middle, and 1018 at the bottom with very low significance. Now, the stochastic fast and stochastic slow, they don't really have much information here, so let's crank it up to two hours and see where that goes. Oh. We get to see here is it really shows you that it might be time to buy after hours because of how low it's getting but we want to make sure it stabilizes first a really strong support is at the 1393 we'll talk about supports right now and so first we'll start with the fibonacci retracements at 1706 the 52 week high down to the 907 and we get to see a fibonacci retracement support at the 1401 Below that, 1306. Below that, 1212. And you get to see it's actually looking really nicely, even the 1095. So this one is following the Fibonacci retracement. Resistances currently is at the 1535, followed by 1706. Now, what we're going to be looking at here is significant supports and resistances the traditional way. There we go. We're going to do uh, a price line action. We get to see here, the current support it's sitting at is actually... 1394 uh, below that we're looking down to 1372 and below that we're looking at 1348 and then all the way down to $12 after $12 we're looking at 1162 resistances here what we get to see is current resistance sits at 1468 as you can get to see and then above that we're looking at 1498 uh, above that we're looking at 1532 and then 1548 and all the way up to 1609 now we can take a look into the company and what it has now i did try to go on towards uh stock twists for some of the places where you can find uh or sorry not stock twist twitter uh, to try to find a bit of the hype on it and you know a lot of this hype is warranted onto the stock now let's take a quick look into things like their company their website okay so this is their website uh First thing you see is that their entire website is powered by a polar entire kind of operations are and when you go on towards their products you see three main products Palantir, Gotham, the Foundry and the Apollo and the Apollo is basically the power of SAAS in, uh, in places where no SAAS has gone before amplify and extend power of data integration integrate manage secure and analyze all your enterprise data and what I'm going to do here is move forward. So you get to see they also have kind of a gift shop kind of thing, which I think is kind of cute. Um, it honestly gives me a little bit of vibes of Watch Dogs. If you've ever seen Watch Dogs, it's a little bit off the same kind of um, operations. I mean, in terms of stores and kind of the gear. Watch Dog is a game, though. And then looking into the media, they have a lot, a lot of information for you. You literally can have in and sit all day pouring into media's um, basically information all the way back to 2009. Uh, a lot of interest on it though is for uh, Alex Karp, uh, which is what we call him the planter's chef. So there's that. Now taking a quick look into next thing, which is the press releases they had. Um, so NCAT's awards planter technology, $36 million in contract to support secure scientific platforms environment, U.S. Army Research Lab select Planter, uh, Planter Technologies and Corporations for $91 million artificial intelligence and machine learning developments, Umata ho uh, Holdings, and uh, them to begin work accelerating digital transformations off the logistics industry in Japan. 
Now, the last thing here is Planter Technology joins the Trinity Challenge. So, what's the Trinity? Trinity challenge, sorry. Uh, it's basically a challenge that uh, goes on to work, or list of companies that have gone together to for the aim of increasing the world's resilience against the pandemics of the future by harnessing the power of data analytics and truly collaborative problem solving. I realized that this screen is actually a lot smaller than I anticipated. There we go. And it says alongside including Google, Microsoft, Facebook, McKinsey, and uh, a company, the Gates Foundation, the University of Cambridge, the Swiss Re Panther. Uh, so there are a bunch of different companies on there. You get to see a lot of big names. That is positive news. So one thing here is Planter is not a data company. Um, and that is something they're really trying to push. This was a three minute read on Medium uh, left by them around yesterday, actually. And so their business model is not a data broker or a data aggregator. It's unlike many tech companies. Our business model is not based on the monetization of personal data. We do not collect, store, or sell personal data. We do not use personal data to train, prop uh, to train proprietary AI or machine learning models to share or resell with other customers. We never facilitate the movements of data between clients except when there's our specific clients have entered into our agreements with each other. Palantir is a software company, so basically from my understanding is a software company that basically uh, tries to bring solutions to their clients rather than an analyzing data. Um, and if you get to look into their website, they have as well basically a blog which a lot of it is posted on medium.com. You get to see a lot of these informations that are really interesting on how they work and how they operate as well as all different kind of interesting things. I mean, they're definitely an interesting read, uh, whether it's data science, engineering, software engineering, developments, and everything in between. Next thing is their investor relations. This is where we come. Now, I'm going to go thoroughly into their presentations because I think there's a lot to cover here, but nonetheless. First bit of the presentation, they're here, they show you basically some of their clients and some of the latest developments for these kind of operations that their kind uh, sorry, their program supported. So basically they say congratulations to the US Justice Department on its settlement with uh, Peru Pharma and the fight against opioid epidemic in America. And supports the Department of Justice with Planter Gotham. Remember? Foundry, Gotham, and there was another third one. Uh, Apollo, so they support him here with Gotham. Wow, the names are really catchy, I kind of remember them. That's another catch for you. And then the next thing is congratulations to the World Foundation program on its Nobel Peace Prize and they support him with the Foundry. And then uh, in uh, in AWE, often, oh sorry, in an hour of and grateful for the services of our special operators, Tober's Rescues is yet another amazing accomplishment, one that often goes unrecognized. Uh, they support them with special operators. Next is their revenue. Revenue has increased from year to year by 52%. Uh, adjusted operating loss, it looks like they have lost to income, so that is positive news for them. Uh, I'm gonna go towards their earnings a little bit more in details after this uh, presentation. They have basically a COVID-19 kind of focus as well here with terms of operations right here. COVID-19 forced institutions to transform quickly in order to survive. And they're helping those customers with doing more with less in terms of software solutions. An energy super major developed an ERP suit in hours and within two weeks, they generated $57 million of cash saving and expected, sorry, and it's expected to generate $1 billion of annualized basis. An aerospace customer signed the largest commercial deal uh, we've ever done in the midst of a pandemic that shook the entire industry, and that goes on towards $300 million in five year renewal. Next thing you're looking at is a Fortune 100 consumer goods company deployed an ERP suit to quickly uh, respond to COVID 19 related disruptions. Now, our platforms are connecting the entire value chain from procurement to distribution. Next thing, the top five pharmaceutical company is linking data from more than 2,000 clinical trials in Foundry to uncover trends across trials and securely analyze outcomes at population levels. Next thing is their software is becoming the de facto operating system of US and allied defenses. Basically, they signed a two year agreement with $91 million contract with the US Army Research Laboratory, and then we're looking in terms of enabling mission demand for NORAD and the US NORTHCOM and slash NC joint 
all domain commands and contract for GADC2. A bit more information on that, I'm not going to go through that. Their software is becoming the infrastructure for the US healthcare system from R&D to distribution and the public to private, from public to private. They signed a $36 million contract to support NCATS efforts including cancer research, COVID-19 research and PEPFAR. Next is powering N3C slash Unite, an effort from the NIH to collaborate with Clinical and Research Institute. Next thing here, supporting the complex supply chain and logistics for COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Um, and they're basically powering and securing cross-border collaboration for pandemic response and beyond. Next thing is powering the NHS, that's the National Health System of England's allocation and distribution for more than 2.7 billion pieces of PPE from port to patient. And next is supporting the President of Columbia through the nation's pandemic response. And they have the financial updates. 52 million increase year on year in terms of quarter three. Average revenue per customer has increased by 38 million. And average revenue for the top, top 20 customers has increased by 36%. Adjusted operating uh, income. So our adjusted operating income quarter two was $73 million. And adjusted operating margin was 25%. Next is revenue from your top 20 customer it continues to grow while customer concentration is decreasing. Uh, so that is positive news as well. Commercial revenue increased by 35%. Government revenue almost uh, three quarters more, around 68%, so two thirds, so sorry, more above there. Uh, and the next thing coming up is the revenue slash contribution. So the accelerated growth in all three phases of the business model. Whether you're talking about acquire, expand, or scale. And so the acquire, you're looking between not, uh, 41 from 19 to 254 for expand from 161, 452 from 296. Positive news there. And then the next thing we're going to be looking at is their actual uh, continuous, sorry, the actual uh, balance sheet. But $1.8 billion in cash and casual equivalents as of September 30th. I'm not going to go towards their, for, well, you know what? Let's take a stab into their guidance. So for the guidance with strong visibility into the future revenue and continued acceleration of our business, we're raising our full year uh, 2020 revenue and adjusted operating income guidance. Uh, we're going on for guidance around 44% growth and 112% uh, in terms of adjusted income for 2020. I'm not going to go through appendix, so let's move forward. So some of the solutions they have, as you get to see from the presentations, AI, and machine learning, automotive, auto racing, case management, cyber, defense, financial compliance, GDPR, uh, insurance, intelligence, law enforcement, legal intelligence, manufacturing, mergers and acquisitions, pharma, RWEs, uh, sales and revenues, and Skywise. Those are all the clients or, solution, or client, uh, solutions for clients uh, kind of field. I'm not going to go through products, I kind of did skim through that. And now comes into words their 8K. $289.4 million in revenue for the third quarter, as I said, 52% year over year. Full 2020 year revenue guidance raised from, uh, sorry, to a range of $1.07 billion to $1.072 billion, up 44% year over year. And then we're looking at new contracts in third quarter, including the US Army, $91 million. National Institute Health of $36 million and $300 million renewal with their airspace customer. Now let's dive all the way down towards their revenue. Revenue three months ended, this is in thousands, 289 million compared to 190 million before. You're looking at a gross profit that is really high. Now 2029 months ending September 30th, it looks better than 2019. Uh, not as double as you get to see, but you get to see year over year it's double, 2020 versus 2019 it's not double. But here is the issue with the massive net loss. Take a look into their total net loss and the big chunk of it comes at the total operating expenses. Research and development almost won four times more. General and administrative, four times more. Sales and marketing, three times more. So your total operating expense went from 269 608 million to 987.8 million dollars so that kind of cuts it down as a net loss from what you had as a 144 million net loss to almost a little bit short than 1 million dollars in net loss sure they have 1 billion dollars in cash overall 
right? Uh, 1.8 billion. But that still looks really bad on their balance sheet. So that is something concerning. Next is their cash. Their total assets has expanded from 1.6 billion to 2.6 billion. All cool, but revenue needs to be checked. That is all to kind of consider. Institutional buyers, you get to see a flood of green. And this is what I like. Especially the new IPO where it just kind of came on the market. When you see a lot of flooding that way. It looks like they are interested to buying it off right from the shelf. So it looks like a lot of these companies are very interested in this one and picking it off right off the shelf. That's kind of the end point. Of now, Ed, what do you think we should do? What's the next move on this one? All right. So it looks like a massive shock or a massive shock has happened for this one in terms of their earnings. Their massive loss coming on almost negative one million dollar net loss really showed this one to drop. Now, the thing is that you need to have an, a session so what i'm saying is an entire session between that news and what's coming next you want to see what happens in terms of the massive volatility because let's go on towards the 15 minute candles uh this will be fun i've never done this before on a uh, video but take a quick look into 15 minute candles what's happening here is the news hit and a massive drop a news hit massive drop around 4 30 that's where you started getting kind of the conference and it started kind of improving a little because the conference stuff are kind of exciting you want to see it settle you want to see it wait on see if what you actually seen here on the presentation everything that is bullish um other than the revenue that looks really bad uh if people are gonna let it sing of course i'm not saying everyone's gonna watch my videos i'm, I'm probably a very small percentage of you guys that are amazing enough to watch these videos i'm talking about these information are out there and they're going to be circulated you want to wait for it to kind of settle down remember at the start of the video i think we were somewhere around uh 1390 uh right now we're sitting at 14 i mean i do have the charts but let's go on quickly uh yeah it was somewhere around 13 oh no, sorry it was not so we're gonna do one month 20 minutes and Around here yeah so you see it's kind of already is bouncing it was around 1378 I think or almost $14 kind of hovering around the range and you want it to do is kind of stabilize you get to see that you know it has kind of this thing where there either jumps back up or stops down and a lot of things are happening in extended markets you need to let it settle first see how the news reacts let it calm and then you can think about buying in but definitely in the future for a long term i think the stock is awesome but you need to let it accumulate you need to let it sit down cool down this massive volatility you don't want to bet against going up and down equally as fast want it to kind of stabilize catch its breath and then join in although i really think that this one will probably be 20 dollars by the end of the year um that's kind of the feel that i'm getting uh but it really depends on their next earnings the catalyst and stuff like that but this earnings you have a lot to work on and let's see how the market Kind of absorbs that news that's my that's my opinion about it what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below there subscribe and like and you have a wonderful day